I've been going on a lot of backpacking trips with some people on the newer end of the spectrum to backpacking, and I've seen some cringeworthy things. Uh, these people, uh, they mean well, but they just don't know some core things that uh, I, I want to address those things today. What are the main mistakes I see backpackers making? This might be on the trail, uh, around camp, or inside their tent when they're trying to get good sleep. So today on the video, we're gonna be breaking down all the mistakes that people make on backpacking trips. I wanna give a quick shout out to Mystery Ranch for helping to make this video possible. They are sponsoring this video and they make amazing backpacks. If you're interested in more, check out mysteryranch.com and let's get into the video. So getting good sleep is obviously super important. If you if you're not sleeping well, you're just not going to have that much fun out there. And if you're cold and miserable, then you're not sleeping well. So all those things are related. So I wanted to talk about some either some misconceptions or mistakes that I see people making. First thing is misunderstanding bag ratings on sleeping bags. I have with me today a 15 degree sleeping bag from Sea to Summit. It is the Ascent 2 rated to 15 degrees. It's a great sleeping bag. However, what I think people don't necessarily always know is that if the temperature outside is actually 15 degrees, that doesn't mean you're going to be comfortable in that 15 degree sleeping bag. Now, some companies do uh, what's called the EN rating, uh, which really helps break down, kind of demystify what's going on. So then there's they list the comfort rating and then the core rating or maybe the risk rating. Um, and you can see at the different ranges of the temperature what the bag is going to be good for you at. So making the right uh, pairing of the, of the sleeping bag with the weather conditions is super important. The 15 degree bag is the most common sleeping bag on the market, but a lot of people think that that means that they can camp well below freezing and that's just not necessarily the case. So making sure that you understand that sleeping bag rating is very important. Along with the sleeping bags, another thing that I see happen all the time is people not using the zippers and the hood correctly. I'm gonna hop inside my bag here and uh, help showcase that. Okay, so this is kind of a cool sleeping bag because it has double zippers, which I do like, but that's not the point. Um, so if you're trying to get really warm or you're having just a really cold night, you want to zip up everything all the way. Sorry, it's going to take me like eight minutes. Okay, here I have a bag that is partially in its full enclosed capable way. So a lot of people don't necessarily understand how to best use their hood. Now this is a really important part of getting that sleeping bag range down to say 15 degrees. If you've got freezing temperatures, you need to be appropriately using your hood. And you need to have this up and around your head, pillow on the outside, we'll get into a little bit more about that later. Um, and then a lot of people don't necessarily know what to do with these strings. So your hood can cinch way up and basically make it so that the only thing that's exposed is maybe your nose and your mouth. You can, this is, uh, I can get this cinched down even more if I would so desire it. But what I'm doing here is I'm trapping the air from getting out at my shoulders. That's a really important part of what's going on. So that every time I move, I don't just lose all that warm air that my body's been working hard to heat up out the top of my sleeping bag. Now, I was recently on a trip with a newer backpacker and it was really cold out. It got down uh, to like 16, 17 degrees. And I woke up before him and came to check on him and he had his whole head outside the sleeping bag. And he didn't even know that the hood was there. So uh, obviously that's uh, maybe not necessarily what everybody's going to experience, but just making sure that you understand that this is how you really maximize the warmth of your sleeping bag, cinching these down. I can get this down even probably a little bit tighter. And on a really cold night, this is all that I'm gonna have exposed is just my mouth. Uh, just to allow that uh, moisture in the, uh, of my breath to go outside the sleeping bag. 
Uh, another mistake I see people make is they'll dive all the way in and then they don't have a way for the moisture to get out. I can't really tell if Max is still filming me. Uh, I'm kind of blind here, but I'm just, I'm just keeping rolling, okay? So that is another mistake I see people make. Let me get out of here. See if I can do this. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, another mistake that people make is um, on a really cold night, they'll put their pillow inside the hood. Now, I get it because you don't want your pillow to be squirreling around all night. Um, and that is a frustrating part of it. So by keeping it here, it doesn't move. But I cannot fit this hood and the pillow uh, together around my head. So that is something that really is problematic. So the proper place for the pillow is right out here. And hopefully you may be putting your, you know, this closer to the head or maybe putting some other object uh, at the top of your sleeping pad so that that doesn't just go all over the place. I know it's frustrating, but that's how you, you're gonna maximize that warmth by having this all the way cinched around your head. Last mistake I see people make all the time is what I'm doing right now. Uh, my feet are hanging off of my sleeping pad just like so. And if I'm especially on my stomach, now my feet are on the ground and my toes are going to be losing their warmth very, very quickly. If your toes are cold, you're just gonna be having a rough go of it during the night. So making sure that your toes are not hanging off the end of your sleeping pad if you don't have a full length pad, just stuff some extra stuff at the bottom of your tent and uh, keep your feet from being on the ground. That is the main thing. So don't do that. Don't have your feet touch the ground or your feet will turn into ice blocks and you won't be having any fun. The next mistake that I see people make with their sleeping arrangements in the tents is not properly ventilating their tent. So most tents will have something like this uh, Velcro doodad right here and uh, they just leave that closed especially if it's uh, a moist environment. We just had some snowfall here, which means the ground is very saturated with, with moisture. So what'll happen is through the course of the night, a lot of that moisture will start coming up and filling the inside of your tent. You're breathing out. If you're with two people in a tent or multiple people in a tent, you're all breathing out, you're creating moisture, and that doesn't have anywhere to go if this is closed. So a lot of times you might wake up and you have a tent that's literally dripping water uh, inside. And that means you're not properly ventilating your tent. You're gonna get your gear wet. You're gonna feel colder in there actually. Some people think that by closing this, they're gonna necessarily be warmer. And that may be true in certain environments, but if you trap in a bunch of moisture in there, it's not gonna be good and there's gonna be some adverse effects. So making sure that you use this, use this feature and have a properly ventilated tent it will go a long way to keeping your tent dry and you more comfortable and your gear safer in your tent. Next mistake I see people make is, there's two things right here. Um, so one is there, uh, most tents will have uh, a middle latch, a midpoint here that is really important to pull away from the body of your, uh, your tent if you have a double walled tent. What this will do is this will keep this part of the rain fly from touching the inner wall of your tent, especially if you have precipitation, moisture, snow coming down. So if you do that, it'll really help shed that water away and it'll land multiple inches away from the inner part of your tent rather than uh, actually laying against the inner part of your tent and then ultimately transferring into your tent. So if you've got any moisture or precipitation coming down or in the forecast, make sure that you use all of the points that are gonna pull the rain fly away from the walls of your inner tent. Next is uh, something I see all the time because most people don't know that this is even right here. So the tent, almost every tent is gonna come with a little bit of Velcro or something like that where the tent poles lie and you can actually connect the rain fly to the tent poles. And what that'll do is if you've got a bunch of wind 
rather than the tent pole slipping, let me disconnect this real quick. Rather than the tent pole slipping around from in there and just moving around, which will make it a lot easier for a tent to collapse, if you connect this, then you're combining the rain fly and the tent pole together and, and it's just gonna be a lot stronger. So I highly recommend that you actually, if you have a breeze or a windstorm coming through, make sure that these Velcros are attached to your poles. And if you need to, then you can also add in these guy lines and stake these out and that'll really make your tent a whole lot stronger. Uh, the last thing I see people neglecting to do, <laughs> neglecting to do uh, with their tent is not properly tensioning their tent. They're just leaving this and uh, leaving the whole rain fly very loose. Um, but what you can do is you can tension this up, pull these corners, and you'll actually tighten up all of the rain fly all the way around. And that'll just make for a much more tight, taut, and structurally sound tent. So I definitely recommend you do all of those things. It'll make your photographs of your tent look better. Your tent won't look saggy and droopy and just like it's not having a good day. So doing those things will, will be a lot better for your tent. And most importantly, if a windstorm comes in or a storm, inclement weather, you're gonna keep your, safe, your stuff safe and dry and you'll be sleeping much better through the night. Come on down here with me. Uh, the next thing, uh, the next and last part of my series here is about mistakes people make with their backpack itself. So uh, something that I just see, I've been seeing very commonly is not adequately using a lot of these straps that a lot of backpacks will come with. Um, so they might just have these undone and just like loose and flapping, or maybe they're clipped and buckled, but they're not tensioned in. So what I like to say is that, you know, if using this, if the gear is far away from your back, it's going to feel sloppy, it's going to feel heavy, it's gonna be unresponsive to your movement. And so as much as possible, I try to cinch these things down um, to really, what this does is it's going to draw the gear closer to my back as possible use you know don't leave things unbuckled make sure that everything is nice and clean and tidy um, and trying to minimize how much you're buckling things to the outside the only thing i would say that's a great uh, is if you have like a z light mattress or a tent or something like that putting that out here is totally fine but if you can don't put stuff on the outside of your backpack it's just sloppy. There's more. So a lot of backpacks will also have these uh, ways to tension this in from the front of the bag and kind of draw it in this way. So I really like being able to cinch that stuff in, have it all nice and clean, doing all of the straps and buckles. That's just going to make a much more tight backpack. And then the last one here is these shoulder straps. A lot of people don't necessarily know that if you have these real loose, your bag is gonna sit poorly on your shoulders and kind of dangle off. And uh, I really recommend tightening those up as well. And let me catch my breath here. I'm at high elevation. Okay, buckling everything up. So if we undo what's gonna happen with these last ones is as I'm hiking, these will tend to loosen up over the course of three, four, five miles. So every once in a while, just grabbing those straps, giving that a tug and really pulling that in to my shoulders. And that brings everything really nicely in. And then it's a much more efficient carry. Okay, that's it my friends. Those are mistakes I see people making all the time on the trail and I don't want you to be that person. And you mostly just for your sakes, you can be having a more comfortable time, get good sleep, keep your gear safe, and uh, feel more comfortable on the trail. All right, did I miss something? What are some mistakes that you see people making? Hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, give it that thumbs up. Please be subscribed here at Backpacking TV. We love the growing community, and uh, please be a part of it. We, we love you, okay? I love you. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.